Welcome everybody to this short tutorial series on how to import point clouds into ARCHICAD and set up uh, the ContraBIM template in this case uh, for really kind of slicing through that point cloud to create useful views so that we can then continue to build uh, the project. So our general outline here is we're going to do a quick introduction, uh, then we will start a new project file. We'll then uh, just go ahead and import our point clouds. We'll adjust our project settings like our stories uh, so that our uh, floor to floor heights are correct. Uh, then we'll actually go through and we'll create some new uh, views that really help us work efficiently with the point clouds. So little slices, if you will, for floor plans and reflected ceiling plans. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we will uh, continue to work with placing our sections and elevations and even interior elevations, which can be super useful uh, when using uh, point clouds. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about modeling. So that's the general game plan for this training overview. We will probably record this all at once and then split it up into separate chunks or uh, just have a full long tutorial here for uh, your viewing enjoyment. So, okay, that is it for our introduction here. We are going to just kind of first kick this off by actually creating our new project file. So I have queued up here the uh, residential template 25 for the USA version. We are loading our ContraBIM profile 25 and we are just going to go ahead and hit new to create a new project file. So while that's loading up here in the background, I'm going to pull up Trimble Realworks just to give you a quick preview of what this project file actually is that we'll be working with. So I've already gone through and uh, done the production work on this particular file and I've actually gone through and um, really kind of simplified things down into uh, different sections here. So you can see I have like a level one folder that has uh, let's just turn all of these off and we'll bring these on one by one. So we have a floor surface. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff in this project in terms of like material stock. So um, we have a lot of holes there, but let's uh, turn on our walls to give you a good idea of the layout here. Uh, we can turn on the RCP as well, which uh, there's a lot going on in terms of RCP here. So um, that's one of the, the main reasons that we wanted to do the scan on this project. So combination of the RCP and the floor plan, we have um, a lot of points here for different plumbing systems um, and framing, obviously. And um, yeah, you can see all the copper in the wall there and uh, piping here for what will be kitchen sinks. So, um, so yeah, what we've done is we've broken these up into different uh, groupings here. So we have our level one. Um, we let's view only our level two here. So you'll see how we're jumping up. You can see we have a lower roof. Um, we have a floor in there and then we have RCP as well as obviously our framing. And then we also up above we have kind of the, the top of our project, which is an attic space uh, containing some mechanical uh, spaces on these different gables at the end and um, yeah that's the project so if we turn on um, essentially everything here let's just display our level one display our level two you can get an idea of the entire project or at least the portion that we will start with for bringing into um, into ARCHICAD here now beyond this we do have additional points um, let's just do this we'll bring We'll turn on, we're going to hide all these, hide cloud. We're going to turn on everything just so you can see the full extents of this. Um, it's a pretty large site. We wanted to pick up a lot of the uh, trenching that was taking place here um, all the way down to where we have some um, electrical equipment over here. So did a lot of surveying beyond the uh, perimeter of the project. Um, but we're mainly going to be focused here on uh, setting up the project for the house. So, okay, that is a quick introduction here. What we've essentially done also on the export side is we've exported these folders to a E57 format. And so I'm going to pull that up real quick just so you can kind of see what we have going there. Let me grab this from my other screen here. Okay, so we have some exports. Um, I actually have a few different versions of them here, um, but essentially we are going to be doing or using our level one version two, which is, you can see a little bit 
heavier or a little more high dense point cloud than our, our version one. So we're going to be using these three essentially. Um, we will not be using those two. I'm going to actually delete those just for the sake of not having confusion. So these are the three that we are going to import into Archicad. So, okay, in the background, we have our untitled Archicad 25 template opened. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. And in this case, we are kind of projecting out here to November Point Cloud Project. So this is going to be your Point Cloud Survey Project version 25. Okay, so we're going to just save this file. And <clears throat> with that, we are ready to move along and import our point clouds. So there's a few different ways to do this. We can we actually have this as part of our work environment, kind of these custom functions up here to import point clouds. Um, one of the, the, the steps that's good to consider before you do that is you actually just go into your object tool because ultimately we are going to be creating a new point cloud that is an object. So let's go ahead and make our settings here. Uh, correct so our point clouds are part of our controls here so we're going to uh, set this to our point clouds um, we're just going to call this point cloud um, we inside of our views here under coordinate uh, we do have a point clouds view here so we're actually going to activate this view this point cloud survey and so now we can see our just our project here um, we can actually probably turn it on where we have our where's our grid lines i'd like our grid lines turned on here so uh, we are just going to make sure we have our grids or our controls um sorry let's jump back here to our working view did these get pinned accidentally no these are set to new so um we're going to set those back to our previous renovation filter and Go over here and so now we have those available now i know the insertion point in this project i've kind of added it like right into the middle of the house so uh, what we're going to do in these next steps we're going to import the point clouds using our zero zero as a reference point and then we are going to um at some point either sh yeah likely we're going to shift everything so that we are kind of matching up to the corner but we'll determine that once we have placed uh, the point clouds which we will do right now so why did my save as not work i guess we were saving it as a tpl versus a pln i should have seen that so this are this is the point cloud project version 25 so right, we're going to save this again so that we are not untitled anymore and okay, so next step, let's go to file, interoperability, import point clouds. And we are going to navigate to our folder. We are going to start out with our level one uh, version two, E57. So let's go ahead and open this. Um, so this next step here is when you import a point cloud, it creates an LCF file. So it's essentially a library file, uh, library container file. Um, and just by default, we'll automatically send this to your Graphisoft under your documents folder, Graphisoft point clouds is where this will be referenced. That's fine for now. Often when I have several point clouds to bring in, I'll do all these at once. And then if I want to move just the LCF to mm -hmm. another location, then I can do that afterwards. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to create and place. Now this may take just a few seconds because this is, what was it, about 600 megabytes. So it's a pretty, pretty dense file. There was a lot of detail in this project in terms of plumbing um, that we definitely wanted to pick up. So we opted to go with a sampling method of one eighth inch. Usually I'll go to a one quarter inch, um, but in this case we use a one eighth inch and I think it's going to bring in a nice dense point cloud for us to leverage and it should be okay. Uh, shouldn't load down Archicad too bad. If it does though, we always have that other option of swapping it out with uh, the quarter inch sampling method. So um, we can see this uh, converting and so we'll just let this run and once it's done, we'll come back and uh, place it. Okay, so we have now converted it into an object. We are going to uh, 
uh, place of point cloud origin at project origin. So again, we're anticipating that's going to come in right at our grid intersection at zero. Uh, we will set this to level one because that's our level one point cloud. And so let's go ahead and hit OK. We'll let this finish up. Okay, so there we are. That is our point cloud. So we can see that um, it did come in as anticipated. Uh, we can see that's the point right there where we had entered the insertion point. And um, yeah, overall, that's you know what we <clears throat> were anticipating and expected. So um, so yeah, we can take a look at this here in uh, 3D as well. So we're just going to pick up this entire thing and kind of inspect and see what our performance is like. Hopefully pretty snappy. One thing that I should likely do is we're just going to close down this file because probably sucking up some of my RAM. So, okay, there we are. There's our point cloud. Um, I can tell that, you know, it's definitely, definitely a little bit on the heavier side, but I think in this case, because we're going to be doing a lot of this work from our plan views um, and from interior elevations, um, I think having that extra density there is definitely going to be worthwhile. So uh, for the most part, things are feeling pretty responsive. Um, if you want, usually when I'm working with uh, point clouds here, I will definitely kind of just like grab a uh, individual section here. Like let's just take this section. Usually I'll just do a marquee around small sections at a time. And so that way it becomes much faster and easier to use and easier to navigate. Um, so you can see when the points on the screen uh, start being reduced, the, uh, the uh, performance greatly improves here for us. So that's, that's great. Um, so yeah, overall pretty happy with this. Uh, now is kind of the, the step here where we would go through and uh, it's time to import our second point cloud. So I'm just going to hit save on this real quick. And then we are going to import uh, our level two. And in this case, we're actually going to import it onto our same kind of import story here. And uh, we'll use that same method of importing based on the a coordinate uh, like insertion to insertion that way it's going to come in automatically up on our uh, next story and um, it should should all work out great for us so okay let's go ahead we're going to import our level two <clears throat> we can see it's actually slightly smaller than our level one which is okay uh, we're going to open that up and we are going to create and place and then this is going to, going to go through the step once again of converting it and um, yeah, we'll come back here once it is done. Okay, once again, we are going to place the point cloud origin at the project origin. Um, and so by doing this, because we exported the point cloud from um, the software uh, we know that it's going to be coming in at an elevation above this. So uh, we're okay to set this as our, uh, well, we have it on level one. If we go to our, oh, let's see, we may adjust these. We'll definitely adjust these actually. So we're right for right now, we're going to set it to level one and we're just going to let this finish out. And then we can adjust uh, which stories uh, they are associated with, but uh, for the most part, when working with point clouds, uh, it's really important to pay attention to what your cut plane settings are and the thickness of those uh, cuts that you are viewing. And so that way we can really dial in the content and uh, kind of expose uh, what we want to see. So, okay, now that we have set this up, let's go ahead and it's been imported. We can't necessarily see it from this view because it is located up above this view. But let's go ahead and we're just going to pull a section uh, through this portion right here and we'll let's go to our marquee view and we should see those stairs continue all the way up with a ceiling on top so um, watch this load and then we'll check it out not sure what that error was but it was the first time loading 
the point cloud, so potentially it had something to do with that. So, okay, so we can see here that we definitely have our level two uh, turned on here, which is great. Um, you can see some nice detail, ceiling framings, lights, um, stairs there. So uh, yeah, that did come in exactly where we wanted in the correct position to our level one point clouds. So, okay, next step is we repeat the process one more time here. And by going back to our uh, first floor here, we are going to uh, once again hit save. And then we will import our roof, which is a little bit smaller, so it should go faster, uh, smaller in size. So let's go ahead and import point clouds. We'll do our level three in our roof. It's about a third of the size, which is awesome. And let's um, we're going to create and place. Let this convert to that object. Okay, once again, we are going to place at the origin. Now, we won't see it from this particular view, but um, if all came in well, then we should uh, see it all uh, on our stories up above. So at this point here, um, we want to start doing some alignment. Now, typically with these projects, I will um, essentially have the bottom corner of the project at our insertion point here. Um, so really it, it may be kind of right at the corner of um, this post here potentially. Um, we can actually see here, this is great, we can see our studs and the inside uh, face of our exterior sheathing there, which is really awesome because we picked this up from both sides. There isn't a finish on the outside just yet, um, but based on that we should be able to locate this uh, pretty easily by using our sections that we already have set up. So um, we actually have some sections already here. We are going to um, activate our section one. And uh, the reason I want to move things around here in section is because it's going to give us a uh, very easy way to grab all three of these point clouds. Um, and then we can move them all together. So grabbing one, two, three, and I'm just going to drag this and I want to make sure that I'm bringing this straight across here and we're going to end up somewhere kind of in this vicinity I believe we're going to actually overstretch it uh, to begin with and then we will bring it back so um, actually in this case likely we will want to use we're going to stretch it further I'm trying to find a good point here on our edge that we can use as a reference. Now, um, we certainly have our post that we could use. Um, alternatively, we could use the concrete face here. Um, we could use the center of our post. We got some different options uh, for sure. Um, I'm kind of thinking in this case, let's go with like a center point on these posts. So I'm going to take it from that assumed center point there and we have snapped it right in the middle if we wanted to try to get this a little bit more accurate one thing that we could do is we can drop in a line here and then use that reference point as a location to drag this over so in order to do this I'm going to have to select all three of these again and then we'll zoom back in and once again we are going to use that center point one eighth of an inch over and you know we're still kind of guessing here but it's looking good so okay that is our alignment in our first direction our next direction is going to be along section a here because we're already set up in the first direction so let's wait for this to load we want to pick up our three point clouds here and i'm going to drag this over and we're just going to overextend it and then we'll drag it back and so in this case I can see right in you know through this model essentially and we are going to use the face of stud 
to set that on our grid lines there. So that looks good. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to see here. Um, obviously, our project in the middle, our elevation on that floor slab is, in this case, slightly different than on the perimeters, but um, that's okay. That's kind of to be expected in a lot of cases. Um, on these floors here, there's a lot of cables and things that may actually be just kind of laid on the floor. That's why we're going to get a little bit of noise on the floor, but uh, we know that we stuck our floor right at the center of our project um, at that location, um, right in the middle of our project. Um, this is actually probably a cut here through our um, canopy because we're actually seeing our windows upstairs um, but uh, but yeah now that we've done that we have adjusted things over and so now we are pretty well set in our coordinates here so at this point we can certainly start taking our other sections dragging them over so something like that might be good um, we have this section through our front porch. We have this section cutting uh, pretty much right through our project, or we'll send this right through our fireplace here. We're going to take this section and let's cut this through our stairs, which occur over here. Um, we can adjust the boundary on that a little bit and okay shoot I'm going to undo that because I think I accidentally copied so did I copy C D nope I'm sorry we have an extra section here to work with um, so let's set this kind of right in this location I'm going to extend this and then finally, we can take our last section. We can cut it right through that outdoor patio. So, okay, so now that we have these set up, um, we actually have additional sections that are not being listed here, but let's just go ahead and activate our section B. These views are set up just to view the point clouds, so it makes it nice and easy. And okay, there we are. And we can see our section cutting all the way up and through. Let's check out our section two. I was hoping to pick this up so we can see our stairs going in the other direction. Okay, so there we are. There's our stairs. And yeah, just a lot of framing, a lot of things going on here. So, okay. Um, Next step, um, we've gone through and obviously we've imported these point clouds. We've adjusted it to our project coordinates. Um, we now need to do a little bit of work on our stories and get our story elevations at the right level here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw in kind of some temporary um, dimensions here. And we are just going to start it from right here. We are going to take this up and we are going to snap this um, really kind of right in this point to try to get that as close to that finished floor as we can. And then we're going to do the exact same thing up on our top level. And those points, well, I can see that we actually had assigned, when I clicked on that lowest uh, story marker, it, uh, it applied it to all story markers. So we're going to undo those by clicking on those once again. And um, we're going to do one more. Actually, we'll, we'll wait to do to set that roof elevation here. But uh, when we hit OK and we drag these out to the sides, this is going to give us a pretty good idea of our story uh, elevations. Um, so like 11 foot 10 would probably be a good one there. And then 22 foot 3 for our top story. So let's go and make these adjustments here in our story settings. Uh, so we are going to call this one level two. 
and this elevation is going to be 11 foot 10 is that story elevation um, we have our upper upper roof what we're actually going to do here is we're going to insert and we're going to call this an attic and this is going to be set at that 22 foot 3 oops attic at 22 foot 3 our upper roof here we're just going to set temporarily to like 30 feet just so that we can enter this next one 22 foot 3 okay so 11 foot 10 10 foot 5 and um, we can adjust that one later now by changing these stories um, it really shouldn't have impacted too much or at all our point cloud elevations um, because they were all associated with that level one uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set our foundation I think we're probably going down probably about four maybe five feet um, so let's set that there and hit OK and we're just going to watch closely to make sure that we um, hopefully are not moving any point clouds there so um, yeah we can see those had shifted um, we can also just come up here and well I don't know if this point in our section is right at the top of our roof but it's probably pretty close so we can add an elevation there 35 foot 2 um, let's see if that works um, alternatively we can do this another way which would be I'm trying to think which way the gables are running I think they're well, let's just do this. We're going to grab a little segment here. I think we're going to find, hopefully, the ridge line on our project. And we can zoom in here. And we are going to just hit the measure tool and see, OK, we're at like 35 foot 2. So let's go to our stories, 35 foot 2. and so by hitting that going back to our section um, we'll see where this ends up and um, that's actually pretty close to where we were thinking it would be it's actually only a quarter of an inch off so um, I'm happy with that so we've now adjusted our stories which is great um, next up we can well we've already adjusted some of our views here um, we definitely have some views or we have a little bit of work to do on uh, these point clouds just to make sure that they show up on the levels that we want. Um, so there's actually some settings here uh, that we're going to go into and uh, adjust. And we can actually do this by selecting all three of them. And so right now we want to see what our floor plan display is. So right now it's set to home story only. Uh, now switching this to all relevant stories what this is going to do is it's going to enable these points to be able to be spread through uh, regardless of what their home story is and so even though they're all anchored at level one when we go back now to our like our attic view we should be seeing those points that are related coming through so there we are that is exactly what we were going for there and that's great so when we go to our level two we should see a nice cut of our level two and there we are we can see our stairs coming up uh, we can see the top of our stair riser right there so going back down we see the extents of our uh, roof on the perimeter and so now we you know really we start we're starting to set this up where we can uh, further dial this in and create more kind of section cuts through this so let's go back to our point cloud uh, set up here in our view map and the next section here is we already have some sections cut let's create a new folder here these are going to be plan views and so the first one that I want to create is just going to be kind of a variation of our first floor plan now what I want to do is uh, we're actually going to duplicate this view. I'm going to drag a copy of it and we're going to go into our view settings here and I'm going to adjust our floor plan cut plane. So uh, we can start this at say maybe like um, I don't know five feet and we are going to show down to our current story and we're going to offset this by 
Oh, uh, let's offset by one foot so that we're essentially cutting out our floor and um, it's going to clean up our floor plan a lot. So right now this would be cutting from one foot to five feet. So let's go ahead, hit OK on that and see what it gives us in terms of our floor plan. Okay, so now we have cut that out. We see only our walls and our studs, which is awesome. We're seeing a bit of our stairs, but maybe not all of our stairs. Um, so just by doing that, we've really cleaned this up. We're now all we're seeing are the posts and the uh, studs and whatever's in the walls here between those segments. So uh, pretty cool here. We can see our plumbing stub outs. So we can see some of our plumbing running horizontally through those uh, cavities. And um, yeah, we can see every stud location, which is awesome. Okay, so that would be a survey point cut from, let's call this one, two, five feet. All right. And what I'm going to do next here is we're going to try to find a section here that's going to give us a nice RCP. So we're going to jump back to our section. And I just want to kind of measure here to get an idea of where our RCPs um, will be. So let's take it here from, I guess, about like nine feet. Probably about nine feet, I think should be good. I mean, I guess we could go a little lower. We could go like eight feet up to, well, I don't know, about a three foot six segment. So three foot six would get us pretty close up in there. Um, now we may want to actually cut a section that's, well, we probably want to get all the framing, you know, that we have drop beams in here and we also have, uh, TGIs up above. So yeah, let's set this to, I'd say probably about 11 foot six as a top point, And then we will cut it down to about eight feet and see what we get. So let's jump back to our duplicated version. We're going to go into our view settings here. And this is going to be like a RCP of from eight feet to, what did I say, 11 foot six, I think. Okay. And our cut plane will be 11 foot six and we are going to cut down to eight feet. So let's hit okay on that and regenerate this and see what we get for our RCP. So looks pretty good. We can easily make out our lights. We can make out our framing. Um, whenever we have questions on what's going on here, uh, we can always just throw a little marquee around it. But this is a nice representation here for our ceiling framing and our light location. So I'm definitely liking this view for sure. Uh, we're also picking up, I'll just note here, we're picking up a little bit of our uh, exterior soffits as well. Um, so let's just play with this a little bit. If we cut this down to say six feet, let's see what we get here. Okay, so that really didn't change anything here. So this soffit here must I'll have to look to see what that actually looks like here. So let's check out section B. I'm trying to understand what that soffit looks like. Okay, so yeah, it was just this small section that we were picking up from 11.6, about right in there. So yeah, barely picking up that connection point. Um, but yeah, we can see that on both sides. I thought maybe we were missing like the bottom portion of it, but uh, we certainly were not. So uh, let's go ahead. We're going to set this view back at that eight feet just so that we keep that consistent. View settings, eight feet. Okay. We're going to rename this level one RCP, level one floor plan, and okay. Uh, the next, next up, level two. So really at this point we repeat the process 
um, we go through and uh, in this case we are just going to drag a copy all the way down we're going to call this level 2 floor plan and we are going to cut this probably similar to what we did similar to what we did before which is going to be about like one foot to five feet from that finished floor on our level two so let's go in and make that adjustment here we may even want to raise that up a little but um, we're going to set this down yeah maybe like to two feet to five feet I want to say so that way we might be able to cut out a little bit more of our roofing here and get a little cleaner cleaner view so so let's go ahead sorry that's the wrong view we're gonna act, activate this new one and okay so we almost cut out all of our roofing there which is kinda what we were going for not quite let's see what happens if we raise this up just another six inches I think we might get rid of that there so let's call this 2.5 feet to 5 feet Oh, close, but not quite there. Still picking up a little. If we went to three, certainly that would do it. With, without, I don't think, losing much in terms of what may be in our walls. But some will have to double check. There may be some plumbing that's below three feet that we want to capture, um, but something that we can always view from another location here. So um, so that would be our floor plan. Um, we are going to cut this once again, level two RCP. And in this case, I think we're going to set this probably about from six feet to like nine feet. I'm just guessing and let's go in and check it out so i'm going to set this to nine started at six let's see what we pick up probably need to go back to section two get a better idea of where this actually will be sitting so again from this point we're starting at six feet so about right there and we want to definitely bring this up about a four foot segment so we're going up to 10 feet in this case so let's add another foot on top there and there we go there's our RCP. So looking good. Um, now, a note here. We are, in this case, picking up soffits on the outside. So mm -hmm. that's actually kind of important for us to see. Um, so that's good. Um, but yeah, we're picking up soffits and dormers in some of these cases. So, so yeah, that's going to be a very useful RCP plan. Um, okay, with this, you know, we're, we're just going to continue on. We're going to go up one more story here. Um, we are going to copy this as we've been doing, and we're just going to call this attic. And let's jump into our view settings here. We, once again, are going to trim a little bit off our floor, and we can set this to, yeah, maybe five feet once again. Um, actually, maybe four feet. I know the, uh, the head height clearance on the edges is going to be pretty low so that might give us a little bit cleaner view um, we're going to rename this so this is uh, the attic floor plan and this is what did I say one to four feet Okay, there we go. We can see our stud wall. We can also see uh, some of those low areas um, kind of beyond the attic space in um, kind of the ceiling crawl space there as well as into some of these mechanical areas. So, okay, those are, uh, that's really the process here for creating these uh, point cloud. We're going to call this uh, point cloud cuts. And so now we have nice, easy, clean views to reference from our 
design view. So when we're on like our floor plan view, we can quickly just trace and reference in our shop drawings here, or sorry, not our shop drawings, our point clouds, uh, show that as a trace reference. And yeah, we can run with this, draw in our walls, draw in our framing, add our plumbing and everything else. So, um, so yeah, that is really um, the workflow here. Um, hopefully this was uh, useful for you in terms of bringing in your own point clouds. Um, we can definitely do a whole series on just, you know, how to leverage this for modeling uh, purposes. Uh, obviously there's a lot of modeling to do here, but, um, but yeah, for now that uh, really kind of encapsulates what we wanted to cover in uh, this video. Um, we of course have other things that we can, actually, you know what, one thing that we didn't cover that I wanted to talk about is just these other views. So we do have um, additional views here. Um, let's see, we need to pull this back. I think we have double line here. So we have elevations that we can kind of roll up a little bit. So let's just check out this elevation. So we're going to open with our, um, well, we want to be, if we activate like our level one view, and we then generate our elevation from this while we have all of our point cloud settings turned on. Uh, let's look at our south elevation and this will give us a nice view of our point cloud. Okay, there it is. Um, similarly, Another thing that I want to point out is we have some really useful, um, actually one thing I'm going to do here, well, sorry, I'm going back and forth. On our elevations, we can always take these elevations. We don't currently have elevations here in our point cloud views, but we can just take these, drop them in here. So these are now point cloud elevations that we can save. Um, point cloud elevations. The next thing, which is in that same kind of uh, thought process here, is let's actually go back to our working, or sorry, our level one floor plan view. We have this still turned on as a trace reference, but we over on this side, we have a bunch of uh, interiors and zones that we can uh, go in and activate here. So Let's do this. We're going to take our great room in this case, and we are going to drag it into our project. Come on, it's running a little slow on me right now when I'm trying to modify this, but okay, let's get this over here. So this is our great room right here. So I'm just gonna place this about right in the center. We are going to uh, take our boundary and we will make some adjustments. So I'm going to send this at least into the framing so that we can get framing elevations on each of these faces. And so from these views now, once again, we, if we go back to our point cloud view and activate this, you know, just as a starting point, we can then go with these same settings and go to our interior elevations for our great room. And what we're going to do is create a new folder here under point clouds. And we're just going to call this, um, we're going to do a new folder. We're going to call this, uh, point cloud IEs, okay? And then we can take this, drop it in there so that it has all of our same settings. And when we start looking at this, we can go check out like our east great room where our fireplace is and we should be able to see that nice and clean. So um, where is it here? There it is. So that looks great. Um, let's do one more of those and then we're gonna wrap this up. So again, uh, we're going to go back to our kind of our floor plan view so that we're turning on those interiors and so that we can place them a little easier. We're going to grab our interior elevation 
as well as our zone in this case. Now the zones that we, we can modify those, it's gonna be a little better to do that after we have actually gone through and drawn in walls so that we can just reestablish those to the wall boundaries. Um, so we're not gonna worry about the zones just yet. Um, but yeah, we want to at least drop these in here so that we can get those nice interior elevations and hopefully be able to pick up all that nice uh, plumbing work that we saw within these walls here. So let's check it out here on this last one and then we'll wrap this up. So um, pick up all those. Just want to make sure that we are picking up past those pipes. I'm going to stretch this over. And we can bring this all the way up. A lot going on in this wall with those bathrooms there. So, okay, so now that we have our kitchen, once again, um, we can kind of reverse this process. So um, I always like, you know, if I jump back to our survey view, then this at least has all of our right settings. Then we can just take this interior from our project map, knowing that it's going to have those same settings, and we can just drag and drop it over into our point cloud IEs. And let's check out our west elevation of our kitchen. And boom, there we go. We can see into the walls. We're not seeing the sheathing on the outside, which gives us nice clarity on it. We can see all these different layers of framing up above for our RCPs, and that looks awesome. So uh, let's check out the north elevation here. Kitchen north. Yeah, there's all the plumbing in the bathroom. So, okay, that is um, yeah really as far as I think we'll go with this here today. That was about an hour worth of recording with, um, gosh, probably 20 minutes of it just waiting for the point clouds to go through. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this and picked up some tips and tricks. And um, yeah, hopefully you can leverage this on your own project. So um, yeah, we'll be back with more uh, modeling tips and tricks here for how to leverage these point clouds but hopefully that was a good intro into um you know kind of expanding on the structure that we already have set up here within the contrapim template let me know if you have any questions and um yeah we'll catch you on another point cloud video very soon thanks for watching